Hey guys, before we get started, I'm just going to do a quick sound check. Um, if everybody could just type in the chat box that they can hear me okay, and then um, we'll just kick start in about a minute or so. So yeah, if you could just confirm that you can hear me and there's no issues, then we're good. we'll proceed in about one or two minutes. Thank you. Okay, so let's get things on the show on the road. So um, yeah, good evening everybody. Uh, my name's Daniel and um, I'm your co-host for the evening. Um, now, special event, it's a pleasure to have uh, Mr. Daryl Guppy with us again and joining us this time is Karen Wong. Um, some of you may have uh, joined the sessions before with Daryl, so they've always been uh, very knowledgeable and um, yeah, a good insight into the markets. And um, yeah, it's a pleasure to have Karen as well with us today. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Karen Wong is a private equity and Forex market trader and um, an author and regular guppytraders.com newsletter contributor. So really looking forward to tonight's session. Wherever you're from, whether you're in Melbourne, um, I'm sure you've been enjoying the storms the last couple of days, um, or whether you're in, uh, New South Wales, I heard you had a bit of snow. So, and whether you're in Queensland, I'm sure you've been keeping warm sunbathing. So, yeah, looking forward to kickstarting everything today. And yeah, it's a pleasure to see so many, uh, well, many of the usual faces, but also good to see a lot of you turn up today. It looks like we have a lot of new faces as well. So, without further ado, um, I'll pass you on to um, to Karen. Thanks, Dan. There you, there you go, Karen. I'll pass you over now. Okay. Okay, I hope everyone can see my screen and hear my voice. Okay, we'll get started. Yep. Okay. Thank you for joining me this evening. Uh, tonight I'm going to talk about a really good skill to have as a trader. The skill of being able to recognize a trending stock in less than 60 seconds. Take a look at these three frogs. If I told you the colored frogs were the poisonous ones, you would take only a few seconds to say which ones were poisonous. But good stocks, to identify good stocks, that would take a little bit longer, maybe a few seconds more, but it should only take you a few seconds. In this presentation, I'm going to show you how to recognize a stock by looking at a chart for less than 60 seconds. This is the outline of what I'll be covering. I will be looking at different ways of finding stocks 
how to use the Guppy Multiple Moving Average, the GMMA, for trend identification, and then I'll share some trades using the GMMA for initial trend analysis. So out of the hundreds or even thousands of stocks listed out there in the stock market, how do we make a smaller group? I mean, we don't want to spend hours and hours in front of the computer. I mean, I know I wouldn't. How do we shorten the list? We can find stocks anywhere. But technical scans using trading software are a popular way of making your group of stocks smaller. For example, you might program a scan to pick out all the stocks which have made a new high in the last five days. Or if the 50 moving average line is above the 200 moving average line. These scans extract only the stocks that you are interested in. Another way of shortening the list is reading newsletters or emails from brokers. So resist the urge to just press delete and put it into your bin, but maybe open it and quickly scan for the stocks and just maybe put them on a file and put them away so that when you have time, you could actually go look through that list and see if there's anything interesting. Social media can be a good resource. Twitter, for example, is full of stocks mentioned on a daily basis. And the last group of recommendations is from any stranger, friend or relative. Yes, even Uncle Bob might bring to your attention the next big stock. Once we have the stocks that we're interested in, we need to be able to tell the difference between a good recommendation and a not so good recommendation. We don't want to waste our time or our money. So we have to have a method to throw out the rubbish stocks. Now, many of you have probably heard of these two stocks. It's LYC Linus Rare Earths and APT Afterpay. These were both found using one indicator, the Guppy Multiple Moving Average, the GMMA. Both were easily identified on the chart as stocks that were trending up. Let's look at how the GMMA works to identify good trending stocks. Now, these were the charts I showed you earlier of LYC and APT. I have placed the GMMA indicator just onto the charts to show you how it looks together with price. So notice there are two groups, the blue and the red. The blue group is the short-term GMMA and the red group is the long-term GMMA. The lines in each group are exponential moving averages. Let me introduce to you the GMMA indicator and how it works. This summarizes quite simply how the GMMA helps us to identify the trend on a chart. The blue lines are the moving averages of the short term group. They show the activity of the traders in the market. The red lines represent the long term group. They show the activity of the long term investors in the market. When the blue lines of the long term or the blue lines of the short term GMMA are above the red lines of the long term GMMA, there is an uptrend. When the lines of the GMMA are compressed, it means an agreement in price is being reached and there is no trend. From here, price may change direction, either up or down. When the red lines of the long-term GMMA are above the blue lines of the short-term GMMA, there is a downtrend in place. The GMMA makes it very clear if a stock is worth analyzing further. Here is an example of how the GMMA lines may move and change on a chart. On the left side of this chart, the blue group is above the red group. There's a general uptrend. It shows how the short term traders and the long term investors are active in the market. When the blue group is below the red group, like we see here, there is a general downtrend. When either of these groups compress, it means there is an agreement on price and the potential for trend change or continuation. After compression, we often see an expansion and separation of the moving average lines. So a good example is at the right side of this chart where we see compression and then an upward movement of the lines 
with separation. When the lines begin to separate, we see the beginnings of a potential trend breakout. Widely separated moving averages show strength in the trend. GMMA trends should be obvious on a chart. Even a child should be able to see this. It really is that clear. Now, before I show you how I use the GMMA, I just wanted to share with you the foundations of my trading process. The first point I've covered earlier, create a short list of stocks. Once I have a list of stocks which interest me, I place a GMMA over price. I should be able to see in seconds, less than 60 seconds, if the stock has potential. If no, I move on quickly. If I still like the chart, I'll put an ATR line underneath price to calculate my initial stop loss. And from there, I use a suitable method to calculate a profit target. After the shortlist, these are the three pieces of information I need before I open my trade. For those who are not familiar, I just want to ex briefly explain the use of the ATR line. The average true range ATR line is used to calculate my stop loss. This is where I get out of a trade if I'm wrong. The ATR measures volatility of how price moves. It displays the boundary where price can move to and still remain with the trend. I use the ATR line as an initial stop loss when I open a trade. If my trade goes into profit, I use the ATR line as a trailing stop loss. This means the stop loss moves up as profits go up. If price crosses to close past the ATR line, then it's a sign of a trend change and a signal to exit. I will show you how the ATR line works in the next section, trade analysis. Using the GMM basics, we will analyze some charts and read the general trend on the chart. The following slides show some stocks where I found, it, I found them in the past using some of the sources I described earlier. Technical scans are a common way of finding some good stocks. So the criteria for this scan was the exponential moving average of 15 had to be above the exponential moving average of 30. Specifically, the last blue line of the short-term GMMA had to be above the first red line of the, the long-term GMMA. By using this criteria, the chart of ABR came up in my results. The blue lines of the short-term GMMA are above the red lines of the long-term GMMA. Put another way, the short-term group of traders is above the long-term group of investors. This is an order of an uptrend. The widely separated red lines of the long-term GMMA indicate strong support from the long-term investors for the uptrend in place. The blue lines of the short-term GMMA had compressed slightly two candles back around here, and now they're beginning to expand up and out. This uptrend had potential. So an entry was made as marked by the blue arrow. The ATR line drawn marks my initial stop loss, mm -hmm. and I set a profit target of $2.42. Price traveled sideways for a number of days, and the compression of the short-term GMMA signaled a general agreement in price. Price started to move up at the same time as the short-term GMMA started to expand and move upwards. The long-term GMMA also started to move up and was well separated, showing good support for the emerging uptrend. As price rose, so did my ATR line. So I moved my stop loss up matching the price on the line. This method protects profits along the way as price rises. My profit target was $2.42, which was reached where I've drawn the dotted line just here. An exit was made the next day at a slightly higher price of $2.45, as marked by the yellow star. After the trade was closed, we see that the blue lines of the short-term GMMA fell through the red lines of the long-term GMMA. Price triggered the ATR stop loss 
and there was a signal of a trend change. The trend has now changed to a downtrend. I found this stock mentioned on Twitter. The tweet claimed BWX was moving up this week. How exciting, I thought. So I quickly opened the chart and then I saw the blue lines of the short-term GMMA was sitting below the red lines of the long-term GMMA group. This is in the order of a downtrend. Disappointingly, there was no sign of an uptrend I could join. Entering at this point would have been risky. The probability of success was also low. So let's see where price went next. Over the next few days, the short-term GMMA passed up and through the long-term GMMA. Aggressive traders might like to enter around here. For those wanting more certainty, an entry marked by the blue arrow shows an area where both the short-term GMMA and the long-term GMMA have separated and started to slope upwards. At the right side of the chart, price triggers the ATR stop loss line and there's a signal of a trend change. As you see, the blue lines of the short-term GMMA started to fall through the red lines of the long-term GMMA. The trend has now changed to a downtrend. Being able to read the charts mean we can observe safer entry points. Instead of relying on one tweet, where the entry point at the time was actually quite risky. So let's look at the profit outcomes of uh, by subtracting the entry price from the exit price set by the ATR stop loss line. So if you made a risky entry based on the tweet, you would have made a profit of 16%. At this point on the chart, it was really risky because there was no sign of an uptrend. Price could have easily fallen lower. Now, if you entered as soon as the short-term GMMA started to expand out, this would have been a more aggressive entry based on an early expectation of an uptrend. So entering here, trades would have made a profit of 7%. And the safest entry point would have yielded a profit of 4%. This is an example of how a not so good GMMA set setup can lead to a not so good outcome. IRI was a stock recommended in a broker newsletter. On the daily chart, we see the blue lines of the short-term GMMA had passed up through the long-term GMMA. And we see compression here of the long-term GMMA, and it meant that the long-term investors were not very active in this stock. It was a poorly supported uptrend emerging, and it wasn't the best uptrend on a daily chart. But the weekly chart on the right hand side of this slide showed a nice stable uptrend with the short term GMMA above the long term GMMA. Over the longer term, the trend was up. Some traders like to enter into a trade where we have the weekly chart showing a really strong trend. And even if the trade on the daily chart is not so obvious, they would still open a trade. And that's okay according to your trading plan. But ideally, the better setups are the ones that show some really good GMMA patterns on both the daily chart as well as the weekly chart. So an entry was made as marked, followed by sideways price action. Both the short-term GMMA and the long-term GMMA were slightly compressed. When you see the GMMA lines going sideways, there is no clear trend. It isn't a signal to buy into a trend, but it could be a signal to exit, as marked by exit A. Some might, traders might continue to hold and actually wait for something more obvious to, uh, to emerge out of the compression. So we see this when the short-term GMMA actually starts to turn down and sit under the long-term GMMA. So here the lines start to expand and turn downwards. The change to a downtrend is more obvious and definitely in place. So exit B shows this delayed exit, of course, at a much lower price and a larger loss. GMMA is good for recognizing high probability trades and also low probability ones as well. This is a stock recommended by Uncle Bob. He said, this stock is a very good one. My neighbor told me it's sure to go up and make me a lot of money. You should buy it too. So 
You might laugh, but never dismiss any stock suggestion from anyone. I'm always interested when someone tells me about a stock, any stock really. So when you know how to read the GMMA, you'll be able to assess the stock for yourself. This chart actually looks good. The short-term GMMA is sitting above the long-term GMMA in the order of an uptrend. The blue lines of the short-term GMMA have previously compressed and are now just beginning to expand out. The widely separated red lines of the long-term GMMA show good support for the uptrend. This stock has good potential. So let's see where price went next. I open a trade in INR as marked by the blue arrow. The ATR line drawn marks my initial stop loss and I set a profit target. Price continued to close higher as price went up, both the short-term group and the long-term group also started to, to go up as well. And they were showing widely separated lines. This is a really good indicator of trend strength and support for the uptrend. As my trade became profitable, I used the ATR line to protect my profits, moving my stop loss up as price went up. Price did reach my target and I closed my trade at 42 cents as marked by the yellow star. After the trade was closed, the short-term GMMA line started to compress. Price eventually fell below and triggered the ATR stop loss line. And that was a signal of a change in trend. There's some more compression and the short-term GMMA passed down through the long-term GMMA. A downtrend was now in place. In summary, the GMMA is useful for any time frame in many markets, and this can be used for Bitcoin as well. You can use the GMMA on Bitcoin charts. Uh, FX trading is a very good market to use GMMA in as well, and I'll talk about that in my next presentation for next week. The GMMA tells us if we should go long or short, and it also tells us if we should be staying out of the market. Lastly, the GMMA enables us to spot a trend in less than 60 seconds. If you're interested in learning more, Daryl Guppy and I have a book coming out at the end of June. I do believe you can possibly do a pre-order at the moment. Uh, it is showing on a lot of uh, websites worldwide, but um, you're also very welcome to read the articles on my website at www.karenwong.net. I wish you all well in your trading and thank you for your attention. Oh, thanks, Karen. Thanks for that. That was really insightful. Do you want to, um, so while we do this, do you want to pass the pass it over to Daryl or do you want me to do it? Uh, could you do it, please? Yeah, sure. No problem. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to pass you over to Daryl now. You're up. Okay, oh, just right can. <laughs> there you okay, go. Just confirming, your... just confirming you can see my screen. I can, yeah. Well, that's good. Well, you can, everyone else can. Let me just click show Isn't my it? screen. There we go. Right here. Okay. Karen has talked about how she goes about identifying equity trading opportunities. So, this is really what we do for our daily trade. This is the procedure that we go through every day when we're looking in the market to try to identify opportunities that are worth trading. So what I want to do, I want to look particularly at how we make this analysis apply to foreign currency trading. So I want to look at how we assemble a foreign currency trading pool, how we analyze that, which tools we use and which combinations we use, how we select the best trading opportunity out of that pool and then of course the application so what i'm trying to step through is the same process that i use every day when i'm attempting to find a reasonable trading opportunity we use some of the same tools that we use in equity trading but we also use them in slightly different ways so our starting point is the average daily range 
Now, these are available on my website. Just go to guppytraders.com. And each day we update the five day ADR for the top nine currency pairs. This tells us, for GBD, NZD, for instance, that over the last five days, the average of those moves is 135 pips. Now, why is that important? It's important because statistically, we know that there is an 85% probability that today's price move will equal 75% of that five day ADR. So if we take a trade in GBP NZD, we can be looking for about a 101 pip trade with an 85% probability that that target will be hit. Euro NZD, <coughs> excuse me, 89%. GBP CAD, 89%. GBP AUD, 83%. 83 pips rather than percent. GBB, USD, 74 pips. Now, we've got nine stocks to look at, nine pairs, but I really don't want to spend time across all nine. In particular, I'm interested only in the top five stocks. And even then, I'm really only interested in those stocks that are showing at least 100 pips on a five day ADR. Now, of course, it's really easy to say, well, we'll just go for GBP NZD because that offers 135 pips, which will translate into 101 pips for the trade. Let's go for the big shot. We can make money there, uh, but not so fast. Takes a bit more analysis than that. Otherwise, we'd all be making money. But first, let's look at how we go about calculating the average daily range. Now, we use two indicators in FX trading, the average daily range and average true range. And it's easy to get them confused. What we're doing with average daily range is we are doing just a simple calculation, an average calculation of the number of pips moved each day over the past five days. 100, 130, 90, 80, 90, divided by five. And it gives us the average daily range for that five day period. The figure is important, as I said, because there's an 85% probability that tomorrow's price move or the price move within the next 48 hours will reach 75% of that range. That's a statistic, a probability relationship that has remained constant for the past 10 years. We've been applying this every day in all of our FX trading over the last 10 years, and we find that this statistical relationship remains firm and solid and reliable. One problem, I might say almost a big problem, and that is, although we might decide that there is 100 pips on offer for the next trade, this in itself does not tell us which direction it's likely to move. We can't tell from this early statistical analysis whether there's a high probability of an uptrend or a downtrend. So although we might be looking at GBP NZD with 135 pips, it doesn't tell us it's going to get 135 pips on a long side trade or a short side trade. For that, we have to apply a different set of analysis. Now, Karen has already talked about using GMMA. And I'm not going to get too carried away with explaining GMMA in detail, except to say that on an equity chart, typically, we will talk about the long term group representing what investors are thinking and the short-term group representing what traders are thinking. Now, the long-term group on this display, MT4, is the red series of, of moving averages and the short-term group 
is the purple series of moving averages. GMMA can be set up easily as a template on MT4 and MT5. Simply bring up a chart, add all of the indicators, and remember the values are for the short term group 5, 8, 10, 15 daily moving averages, 3, 5, 8, 10, 12, and 15. Six altogether. Make them all the same color. The long term group is 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, and 60 moving averages. They all must be exponential. If they are not exponential, then the signals will be less reliable. Save that as a template, and then you can apply it quickly to any chart that comes up. We use it as a default display. So what we're trying to establish, here we've got GBP NZD, the first on that top of the list, there's a potential for 135 point move tomorrow. What's the trend direction? We really can't tell. Even though this offers the most potential, it's not a good trade to take. The long-term group is compressed and beginning to turn down. That suggests the downtrend is developing. The short-term group has moved up, hit the long-term group and is reacting away. That suggests that perhaps the rally is collapsing, maybe to go back and retest the support level sitting down here. Looking at this chart, there is no clear directional bias. In other words, we don't know if it's going up or down or sideways. So even though the 135 pip ADR is very, very attractive, when it comes to looking at the chart, it doesn't really give us the opportunity that we want to look at. The GMMA, when we apply it to a daily chart of FX markets, rather than talk about investors and traders, it's probably better to talk about those who have longer term intentions in the market and those who are very short term intraday traders. But the relationships remain the same. The compression, the expansion, the separation are exactly the same signals that we're reading from an equity chart that Karen discussed earlier. So the GMMA entry signals. Now I have a slightly different approach to the way I apply GMMA, but that's good. That's not a problem. For me, an aggressive entry is an entry that's taken in anticipation of a trend change. These are high risk because there is a relatively lower probability that this initial upthrust will be successful. We've got to be much, much more cautious. So for me, that's an aggressive entry. A cautious entry is as the trend breakout develops and makes its first pullback. Here's where my preferred entry point is. I'm pretty confident adding into this environment. I'm less confident trading from here to here. I won't do that unless there's a very clear trend change developing. Here I'm happy to get in, in a cautious trend breakout. This is what I'm looking for as much as possible on those GMMA charts. And if I've missed the run, then I'm looking for a conservative entry, which is a rebound after the initial breakout. So the breakout normally moves up very rapidly, pulls back, tests support on the long-term GMMA, and then rebounds. And if we go back and look at the GBP NZD chart, well, we can not see any of that behavior at all. There's no indication of an aggressive entry. There's no indication of a cautious entry or a conservative entry. The pip move on, five, on the five day ADR is attractive, but the trading setup is not attractive. So on the next, every day, I look at the top five candidates. So here, GBD, NZD, not interested. Let's go down and look at Euro, NZD. Oh, instantly looks more attractive in the sense that we've got a large down day and there's a reasonable probability that that is likely to continue moving down. What about the GMMA relationships? The long-term GMMA is moving sideways. That's telling us 
but the long-term investors, for want of a better word, in this market are not convinced that there's a train train developing. What we're seeing is oscillation around this center point created by this virtual resistance level from the long-term GMMA. Yes, it's got a downside bias. In other words, it's not so much oscillating around that as a middle point, but sort of hitting it and bouncing back, hitting it and bouncing back, hitting it and bouncing back. And this is just the latest iteration of that retreat from the long-term group. Probability of it moving, continuing to move downwards tomorrow? Difficult to say. It's not a high probability situation where we can say, yes, that trend is definitely moving. And that's what we're looking for, particularly with FX trading. We are trying to identify the highest probability situations, not the maybe, maybe not, because the leverage that we get provided with with FX trading means that we must be able to manage our stops and our exits more effectively. We really want that trend moving in our favour. So this goes on the maybe, maybe not list. It's possible. But moving through that selection list, let's see if there are better opportunities. Here's GBP CAD. Immediately, this chart looks different. Just looking at the price activity, clearly in a downtrend. No ifs or buts or maybes. This is in a downtrend. This is confirmed. Long-term GMMA turned down, widely separated. Downtrend in place. Short-term GMMA, even more widely separated. And price is hugging the lower part of this short-term GMMA. That tells us it's a pretty solid downtrend. It tells us that any rally back into this resistance level from the short-term GMMA is likely to continue moving downwards. This is the best opportunity we've seen so far. Now, if we were to take this, I also want to have a bit of an idea of where I would replace my stop loss, how I would manage that trade as it developed. Now, this is strategic analysis. It doesn't identify how we're going to manage this trade during the day. It's helping us to identify the best of the opportunities out of those five pairs. And for this, I use an ATR, an Average True Range Indicator. Now, we call this Traders ATR. Wiles Wilder, Wiles Wilder developed the original ATR, and that's usually displayed as a line underneath the chart. Not that useful for trading. We modify this a bit in a couple of ways so that it ends up with this type of display. A close above the ATR line is a high probability of a change in the trend direction. The ATR indicator, the ATR traders indicator is available on MT4 and MT5. It's available in the MT4 store. It's a purchased add-on. You can play around and try and do it yourself, but heck, it's easy to buy it off the web and just have a, a click and add. Here we've shown the direction, which in fact is incorrect. It should be down, not up. And that's a click box that will bring up uh, the options. We're using a 14 day period. You might like to play around with that. We find that 14 day is a pretty good broad tool that's pretty accurate for most currency pairs and most commodity pairs. We're using an ATR multiplier of one. That means that if the value is 100, then 100 is where this is plotted. A two times ATR would plot this line at 200. A three times ATR, at 300, whatever the base value is. So the multiplier also can be adjusted. We find that one is a good working tool for this type of strategic analysis. But you can use 0.75 or 1.5, depending on what you're trading. But as a guide, this is what we use. So at the moment, GBP CAD sits on the, yep, 
we want to take a closer look at this. This is the best one that we've seen out of the five candidates so far. But keep on moving. The calculation of the ATR takes the highest price range. It's, it's designed to identify the true range of price over that five days. Now, some of you will be interested in the mathematics of that calculation. That's why I put it on this screen. Personally, I don't care because all I want to be able to do is to select the indicator and have this display included on the chart. How it's used is more important to me than how it's calculated. The trader's ATR display is like a ratchet, a stairway. It can only, in a long trade, only move upwards. If there is a lower ATR value generated, then we simply retain the previous value. The only time a new ATR value is added in a rising trend is when it's higher than the previous value. So we get this stepped ladder effect. In this case, you can see it in the falling market. The objective is to use the average volatility of price to identify moves that are within those parameters and moves that are beyond those parameters because the moves that are beyond those parameters are likely to signal a change in the trend and time for us to get out of the trade. Now, of course, we've already said that we've estimated what the average daily range move will be, and we use the ATR to help manage that trade as it develops. Here we have GBP AUD. It's one of those five candidates. Doesn't look that good, does it? I mean, we've got a bit of a move up here. We're using ATR. We can define this rise. But when we look at it, the long term moving average is moving sideways. No one's really interested in this particular pair. There's some short term movement. But again, it's not driven solidly. It was here and see the separation in the short term group. But here, the short term group is pretty compressed. It hasn't moved well below the long term group. There's pretty much an agreement in the market about price and value that this is pretty much an appropriate price for GBP AUD pair. We may get some movement on the upside, but there is no strong trend pressure. One of the key differences between trading equity markets and foreign currency markets. In an equity market, we can afford to buy a stock and hang on to it. Why? Because the market's only open for a few hours during the day, 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock, no trading takes place. We can go to bed, have a good sleep, have a nice meal. Sorry, if you're in Victoria, that's going to be possible next week, not this week. But as you're trading FX, you can't afford to wait because this is a 24 hour market. So if you've bought in and you want to wait for the price activity to move in your preferred direction, you have to be sitting on the screen and watching it. I don't want to do that. So it tells me that when I enter an FX trade, I want it to move in my preferred direction as quickly as possible. I can't afford to buy and wait. Part of it's time, part of it's the fact that it's such a leveraged product. And my preference, what we're looking for in these trades is trades that will develop within three to four or five hours. I'm not looking for trades that will develop over one or two or three days. I can't keep awake for that long. I can't actively manage it. So GBP AUD, yeah, it might possibly rebound from this fairly prolonged support resistance level, but it might not as well. So when we look at all of the opportunities that are sitting there, we finish up with GBP USD, which was the last one that was there. How do we define that? 
this is pretty much a gamble in its own way. We've got these massive moves that take place, here up, here down, here up. They don't seem to bear much relationship to the underlying trend development. There is no stability in this behavior. There is no consistency in this behavior. If we buy here, we really can't tell whether we're going to get one of these days or one of these days, a massive rise or a massive fall. And we can see that if the fall develops, it very rapidly moves to the lower edge of the long-term GMMA to find support. And then we'll get a rapid rebound. This is what's happened all the way through here. So this is erratic behavior. It's not consistent trend behavior. Now, there may be some days when you're doing this analysis and this is the best one that comes up, but that's not today. Because clearly the best example, the best stock, the clearest trend is what we saw with GBP CAD, with CAD. Clear trend. The ATR effectively manages this downtrend. So here's our notes. If we apply the five day average range, it gives a daily range of 118 pips. Now remember, we're looking for 75% of that value. And this is part of what we call the ANSYS system, or ANSYS light, to be more correct. So every day, when I look at the top five FX crosses, the top five FX pairs, these are the analysis steps that I go through. My objective each day is to identify the best of those trading opportunities. And there will be some days where there is no trading opportunity. And that is the single most important advantage that we have as private traders, as independent traders. If we're working for a bank, if we're working for a foreign exchange company, we have no choice. Every day we have to trade irrespective of whether there are good, clear opportunities or whether they are just really ugly and erratic like this one or just moving sideways like this pair. One of the biggest advantages we have as independent traders is that we can decide when we are going to trade. This one, I'm interested in trading. And we put together those trading notes and we do regular foreign currency trading notes three times a week using these methods and we make that available for, for people as well. And that's on a subscription basis, but of course there's a free trial period as well. They're the notes that we used on this particular trade. How did it work out? Well, we move, this is a daily chart, but when we manage the trade, my preference is to go in and manage it with a three or five or 10 minute chart. And we will use a variety of chart timeframes across to manage the trade during the day. Karen has a different approach. She uses a much longer time frame, an hourly chart or a three or four hour chart to manage the trade. The important point that's common to all of what we do is that we do not use a daily chart to manage the FX trade. We use the daily chart to identify which trade we're going to take, but not to manage it. Now, I'm not showing you how we manage this trade. Karen, next week, is going to take you step by step through one of her daily trades and how she manages it during the day. But here, our entry was at 1.7056. Our target, that's 75% of the five day ADR range, was 1.6986. We exited at 1.6865. In other words, we followed it past the target level, kept the intraday ATR as the stop following us down. And when that was hit, we took our exit and turned up 191 pips for the trade for the day. That's the type of trading that we're trying to do. Our objective, and we'll go all the way back to the beginning here, 
our objective is to start with the five day average range to find the top five pairs in that environment. Just like Karen, we look at those five pairs. It takes about 60 seconds or less to be able to apply consistent analysis using guppy multiple moving average and combining that with the average true range as a means of managing that trade. Now, sometimes we'll use a straight edge trend line, just a standard average run of the mill trend line to decide how to define the trend and where the stops ought to be put. But generally, we find that the volatility based stop loss, and that's what average true range is, it gives us the volatility, the changing volatility of price which allows us to more effectively and sensitively manage that trend and where we might get out. Generally, we'll apply that. But sometimes a straight edge trend line is appropriate. So in that 60 seconds, we look at the chart and say, yep, that's the downtrend. It's a well-established trend. It can be easily defined and effectively managed using an ATR value. That's the trade that we will take. This is the way that we set it up. Here's our preferred entry point. Now, of course, you're not always going to be able to get in at this preferred entry point. And you will have to adjust your calculation for the 75% move depend on, depending on where you actually made your entry. 85% of the time, we find that that calculated 5DR, 5ADR target, <laughs> excuse me, we find that that five day ADR target is achieved. This will be recorded and will be available for people. If you want to pick up the ATR indicator for meta stock, and we apply this to both stocks and to foreign currency, then you can pick it up off that Dropbox address that's sitting there. It works with meta stock 17 and above. And in the next version, of Metastock, it will be a standard indicator that is included. For those who want to use an ATR indicator on MT4 and MT5, again, it's available in the market, follow the link and it will put you into place. Now we have a book, as Karen has mentioned, coming out in a couple of weeks time, we think towards the end of July is the publication date, that looks at stocks and foreign currency trading and how we apply these and other methods to achieve some fairly consistent success. So thank you very much for your time. Now we'll go to questions. Happy to take them. Okay, brilliant. All right, guys, if you just uh, if you have any questions, just feel free to, to put them in the chat box and um, yeah, I'll ask Daryl. But in the meantime, um, if there is anybody, anybody out there who is new to Forex and CFDs and um, yeah, kind of been toying with the idea, um, just head over to our website. Um, our website is gomarkets.com we are a forex and cfd provider so if you are looking to trade currencies even share cfds um, you're more than welcome to register for a demo account um, which simulates the live environment or you can open an account which takes five minutes and you can access the forex uh, pricing from there so yeah if you are new and looking into it gomarkets.com is the website now all right, brilliant. So we've got a few questions. So Daryl, just with um, the, oh wait, here we... sorry, a few questions have come through here. So just need to scroll back up. So do you do the same analysis for key indices like the FTSE, DAX and the NASDAQ? Can those, can those be applied on those as well? Yes, you can apply exactly the same techniques to those key indices. You, you may change the time frames that you use for the analysis uh, and in fact in our book that's coming out there are details about the differences that we use for commodities for indexes and for foreign currency tonight i've just uh, talked about the fx um uh, things that are there but we use exactly the same techniques and exactly the same method and reach the same sort of conclusions perfect and another question by Michael was, what was the long and short EMA values? Right, the short term EMA are three, five, eight, 10, 12, 
and 15. They must be exponential. The long term is 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, and then we jump to 60. And we do 60 because that's a, a, a consistent reference point used particularly by US traders. Don't know why, it doesn't make any sense, but hey, if they want to use it, we'll let them use it. The key thing to remember is that those values are independent of the time frame. So if you've got a daily chart, then it's 30 days. If you're using a weekly chart, then it's 30 weeks. If you're using a five minute chart, then it's 30 times five. So the same principles apply. Compression shows agreement about price and value. Expansion shows disagreement about price and value. And that's usually involved in a trending environment. The degree of separation between both groups of averages gives you an idea of the stability and sustainability of the trend. Doesn't matter what instrument you're applying it to, equities, CFDs, currencies, indexes, Bitcoin, the analysis conclusions remain the same. And how many um, FX trades a month um, using your approach, Daryl? Well, it depends on how, how much sleep you need, how greedy you are, True. or whether you're satisfied <laughs> with just doing one or two good trades. So you don't have to trade every day. Again, that's a key advantage that we have as independent traders. Find the best opportunity, take the money that's available, take the losses when they occur because they will occur. So there's no magic formula. There's nothing that says I must do 10 trades a week or three trades a day or something similar. Sometimes you'll find there are a whole range of trades that develop very rapidly. And then there are flat spots where there's nothing worth looking at. Unfortunately, that happens a, to be when you're in lockdown, but you know, sometimes that's what happens. Yeah, and this is a question for Karen. Um, so this one's from Cameron. He wants to know um, what time frame do you normally use the uh, GMMA moving average? Do you normally use it on the weekly or daily, Karen? I actually use it on both. So it depends how long I want my trade to be open for or how long I'd like to trade that particular stock for. So I might start with the weekly chart and I'll put the GMMA onto that. And then if it looks really good, I'll go down to the daily chart and then I'll put the GMMA onto that one as well. So if I'm trading the longer weekly chart, I'll look for the entry on the daily chart. And sometimes I might only use the daily chart to trade and then I'll set my stop losses on the daily chart. So you can use it for both. It just depends how long you want to keep your trade open for because the daily chart's more maybe doing trades that are open for a few days to a few weeks. Well, that's how I use it. But for the weekly, it's more like a few weeks to a few months. And because um, okay. the daily chart has a lot of noise and you've got a lot of up and down of prices. So when you go to the weekly chart, it kind of smooths out this up and down. and You don't get stopped out so easily. Yeah, it's okay, really, it, it, it's really the, uh, an extension of, of Elder's idea of, uh, of his, of his um, a triple screen stuff where you're looking at the weekly chart verifying the daily against that and then verifying uh with an intraday chart if necessary okay and um, that strategy that you mentioned before daryl can that be used uh, for scalping for like on a short term five minute time frame oh uh, yes yeah no problems at all yep. um so if you're applying gmma and atr to let's say uh, a one minute chart then you can scalp those moves using exactly those same techniques. Okay. And uh, yeah, just to let everyone know, um, everyone will be receiving a recording of this webinar. Um, so if there's anything you missed or if there's any links that you need for the moving average, um, it will be on there. Um, Daryl, if you want, um, if you can just put the link, I don't know if you have the link handy, but if you could put it in the chat box for everybody, just so if anybody does want to you know, purchase the, oh yeah, there we are. Right. Um, I'll do my best. It'll take me a little moment or two, but I will. Yeah, do no, my so best. I just put it in the box. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm with and you. everybody will receive um, a recording in, anyway. Uh, but you can find it on the mql5.com store. Um, it's available in there. Now, 
Are you guys, um, we've got a question from Sirong Lee, um, mentioned about the Kogan trend or LLC trend? The Kogan trend, the KGN, is that? Possibly. We might need to, um, might need to skip is, that one if. Is the, is the question whether it's in an uptrend, is that the question? Um, to be honest, it's not clear. Next question, is there a reason for choosing primary, primarily GBP pairs and avoiding USD pairs? Not particularly. Um, that just happened to be the way that that particular day fell. Excuse me, I'm just sort of, ah, I've got the, I think I've sent the links through to everybody. That was just the, the, the layout that took place uh, on the five day ADRs on that particular day that I wanted to use as an example. So the, the, the constituents of that report each day will change. Now, we don't look at the broader range of exotics, as it were. We're really looking at just the, the, the main traded pairs. But you can go and apply that to the exotics, to the lesser, uh, lesser pairs as well, if you wish. But we find that just sticking in the, the top pairs gives us an advantage in that respect. So it was just coincidence today that, that that's the day I chose rather than um, a, a, a confirmed strategy. And um, just a couple of questions regarding the, the book. Um, I think um, you book. mentioned it's, it's great available book. for pre-order. Is that right? Yes. If you go to, uh, if you go to Amazon, you can pre-order. Uh, it's available there. Um, Booktopia, Kunikunia, anything, any website. Yeah. Okay. Or you Perfect. can order direct from the publisher as well. Yeah. And we'll put it on the Go Markets website, but we'll, we'll take a 30% cut, Daryl. Excellent. All right, so Thank I think I've got much. a bit more clarification on the Kogan one from before. Um, okay, so KGN, it, if it's possible to look at the KGN, obviously, which is Kogan, um, if it's on an uptrend or downtrend, is that something we can look at? Or? I can't bring it up on, on these screens at the moment. Okay, you all have right. To, Excellent. Okay, so to, to, to pack answer that question in a more you know in a broader basis my preference our preference is to primarily use gmma for trend analysis and decision making and then apply an atr or another volatility based process to manage the trade what's important there is the combination of the analysis techniques not necessarily the tools that you want to use so if you're using a Kogan indicator to help you to define the trend, then that fills the same function that you're that we're using a GMMA for. Once you've identified the best trend using your preferred range of indicators, then you may choose to use a different stop loss <coughs> method. Our preference again is for uh, a volatility based method. You might use parabolic SAR, for instance. The thing is that you have these two features. The first feature is the analysis tool that you're going to use to define the trend, and then the tool or method that you're going to use to apply your stop loss. Okay, all right, last question. So do you only look at the ATR to set up a stop loss in this setup, or do you also look at trend lines or other support resistant levels? Okay, I'll. I'll answer the first half and Karen can either agree or disagree because one of the great things about trading is that we all use a different combination of methods. If we all use the same thing, none of us would win, we'd all be losing. It's the difference in opinion and approach that really makes the difference. So my preference is to use a volatility based stop loss that's reacting to the changes in volatility. And I find that the Traders ATR is one of those. The countback line, which can be applied manually, simple calculation, is also fairly sensitive. But often I will use ATR and CBL in combination, and I'll use the most sensitive of those to give my initial alert signal with confirmation coming from the less sensitive one. And which one is more or less sensitive will change over time. Some trades automatically just fit 
a straight edge trend line beautifully. No, you no need to use anything else. You just simply use this trend line that is sitting there. Support and resistance is important, but not so much as a stop. It's okay to use as a stop when you enter the trade. And I try to enter as close to a support or resistance level as possible. So the price doesn't have to move very far before I'm out of the trade if I'm wrong. But support and resistance is not useful as the trade continues to develop. You need something that's going to follow, uh, follow that upwards. Now, as I said, you can use parabolic SAR as another volatility-based indicator. But the problem I find with parabolic SAR is that it has an automatic function that automatically tightens the stop loss position irrespective of the actual underlying volatility of price. So I find that countback line and ATR are most responsive, which is why I prefer to use them. Karen. Uh, just one last question. Do you ever use um, trailing stops, Daryl? Do you ever uh, kind of like move the stops to break even at any point? Every time. Every trade is managed with a trailing stop. That's the point of the ATR. It follows that rise in price so that it's always giving you, first of all, a protect capital stop loss, and later as the trade develops, a protect profit stop loss. So it's always a trailing stop. Now, it's no good setting the trailing stop loss at 5% or 10% or some other figure. Why choose 10%? If the range of price is greater than 10%, then you'll get knocked out of the trade. If the normal average range of price is less than 10%, then you won't get taken out of the trade when you should be taken out of the trade. So selecting an arbitrary figure, 5%, 3%, 8%, 8.5%, 2%, useless. It doesn't relate to what price is actually doing. This is why you've got to have a volatility-based stop loss that's position, its location in any trend will change as the price volatility begins to change. And in modern markets, we're seeing greater levels of erratic volatility. Some days, price will do this all the time. And then for a week, it'll just move sideways. So you need a stop that automatically adjusts to those changes in volatility. Now, Karen, what methods do you use? The same as you. <laughs> I'm actually using the ATR stop loss line as like a volatility-based stop loss, because I agree, you can't just say, oh, okay, 10 cents below the current price, I'll or get out because it doesn't really relate in any particular way to the stock. So I use the ATR line as my stop loss. And so if price starts to go up, I follow that ATR line up. But sometimes also you get really big moves in the stock where they'll just shoot up for a few days. And then you'll find that the current price is actually a long way from that ATR line. And that's when take I the switch money to... Run. You can do that. You can take the money and that's it. You've closed your trade, no regrets. But you, if it's too far from the line, I sometimes switch to the countback line, which is actually closer to what the price is doing. And that will preserve more of your profit. But that's something that we haven't explained tonight, but that's in the book as well. I think it might be mentioned in the book. So um, those are the methods I use. Perfect. All right, brilliant. Off. All right, well, we'll, um, we'll wrap this up here. And... Um, yeah, just to let everyone know, um, session two will be same time next week. So yeah, really looking forward to that as well. And um, yeah, as Daryl said, Carol will be um, explaining a few things next week. Um, so yeah, if um, yeah, like I said, if anybody is new to FX or um, is you know hasn't traded for a while, these indicators are available on the MT4 trading platform. So head over to GoMarkets.com. Um, we provide an MT4, MT5 trading platform. Uh, you have access all to the currency pricing and you can, you know, if you wish to purchase the ATR indicator, those can be loaded on there as well. If you need any help or guidance or if you're new or need any technical support, just contact the support team. Uh, give us a call, send us an email. You know, we'll give you a hand and we'll, we'll set you up. But I think that's everything for tonight, guys. So thank you, Daryl. Thank you, Karen. Very very much and um, we look forward to seeing you uh, same time next week thank you very much and next week Karen's going to talk about how she manages FX trades and I'll talk to you about how we manage some equity trades
See you next week. Okay. See you next Thank week. You. All right. Thank Cheers, you, guys. Thanks, everybody. See you then. Bye. Okay. Bye.